We now welcome to Say Lloyd Dreams, Emmy Award winning for Veep and Oscar nominated for In the Loop, the writer-director of The Death of Stalin, Armando Iannucci. Welcome, sir. It's awesome to have you on the oh, show. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure to be here. Uh, so when did your interest in the internal political landscape of 1950 Soviet Russia with the infamous Joseph <laughs> Stalin at its helm begin? I mean, were, were you always drawn to that period uh, historically? No, I mean, you make, it, make it sound like, uh, you know, from for 20 years we've been yes, trying to make yeah, this Yeah, we've been movie. trying to make this movie. Um, no, I'll tell you what it is. I mean, I was a little bit aware of it. I'm a classical music fan, and um, Shost the music of Shostakovich, great Soviet composer, who um, was under the shadow of Stalin for a while. Right. Stalin criticized one of his um, symphonies and one of his operas. And, and he, he, he kept trying to make it work with Stalin. Yeah, he, he kept, yeah. like, he then wrote a symphony which was like an apology for past right. mistakes right. and things like that. So that, that fascinated me. But interestingly... Having done Veep, I was then thinking about doing something about a contemporary dictator, a fictional contemporary dictator, because something strange is happening in democracy all around the world at the moment. Um, and then I was sent this graphic novel, The Death of Stalin, a French graphic novel, but very much uh, structured around the events that you see in the film. Uh, and, and as I read it, I thought, well, this is the story. This is, this has got, this is the story I've, I've been trying to tell. And it's true. I don't have to do a fiction here. It's true. Amazing that it was true. Yeah. I know. There's so much in the film. People ask me, uh, now, did that happen? And I go, yep. Yeah. And this bit, did that happen? Yes. <laughs> well, when you adapted this from the graphic novel, yeah. from Fabian Nuri's comics, mm. when you wrote the screenplay, what was it that you took from the source material? Was there something you took from the source material that you felt was absolutely necessary to carry over into the movie? Or was that already in the in the comic? Well, I think it was, you know, I mean, it was an instinctive thing. As soon as I read it, I was on the phone to the producer saying, yeah, I'm in. Um, trying to analyze what it was, <laughs> I think the fact, the structure of it, that uh -huh. it just worked so well, but also the fact that it was based on true events because you know, as I was reading it and as I was thinking about it for the film, you know, it's a combination of, like, crazy, mad, hysterical comedy and yet, you know, potentially rather grim subject matter. There's, oh, yeah. there's gulags, torture, yeah. shootings. And how do you make both of those work together? And yeah. I think they only work together if they've arisen from the same source, which is the truth. So... In, in writing the film, you know, I went out to Moscow, I went and researched, spoke to people who grew up under Stalin at the time. I went to the Kremlin, I went to Stalin's Dacha. Um, you know, I tried as much as possible to get the detail right, even though, you know, the dialogue is all ours and it's our comic dialogue, even though, you know, we're, we're compressing the timeline and, and everything. Yes. I kind of wanted to get the atmosphere Right. It's interesting that you, you, you spoke of truth, and I was going to ask you about the comedy mm. and how you approached each, each scene. Yeah. It made me think about, you know, Jack Lemmon uh, used to talk about comedy, and he would say he never tried to be funny. No. He would play the situation straight yes. and let the comedy flow out of that from the Ab situation. Absolutely. And we did a rehearsal period with the cast uh, several weeks in advance. And Wow, that uh, was the del deluxe, right? That was right, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and that, that, probably necessary, I would I, think. I, I don't know why it doesn't happen more, because it's the easiest thing in the world. You know, if they, they want to do it, because they want to have a, sure. they've got a lot of questions. Yeah. So why don't we answer those questions in a room like this, rather than on set? On where set, it's costing yeah. thousands every second. Um, uh, and so we do that. But yes, that was the first thing we all understood, which is play it straight. The situation is funny and <laughs> tragic at the same time. Don't try and sell the gag. Just say the line and say it as you mean it. Um, and, but also, you know, they're all actors who know, understand that and know that, you know, each member on screen, each character on screen, is fighting for survival, you know, underneath, you know, it's, it's no joke to them. Right. They, yeah. You know, it's not funny from wrong, their perspective. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, finding humor in a ruthless dictator whose government was responsible for famine, labor camps and mass executions. Mm. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, 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 I, 
I, I was when I first saw the movie, knew nothing about it other yeah. than some things I heard in the background when it when it opened to Toronto and stuff. But I yeah. was gobsmackingly taken aback by the casting, right, which yeah. I would call audacious. And if you told me the names of the actors who were going to be playing these parts, I'd say no way, right, yeah. no way. Because <laughs> one of the things that that, that makes the movie that, that your performers just soar. Yeah. What was the criteria for casting? I mean, Steve Buscemi is Nikita Khrushchev. I, I'm, I was thinking, what's he going to play next? William Howard yeah. Taft. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean. Yeah. And he's, he's, well, the entire cast is brilliant. But I said to them all, we're not doing impressions here. We're not trying to get, you know, we'll try and push you visually in, in uh, along the right lines, but it's, it's about capturing the spirit of these people. Uh, and the fact that we're not doing on Russian accents, so we're doing it in your own voice, because I want this to feel real. I want this to be, feel like it's happening now. Yes, we've got the details of 1950s Russia uh, behind you here, but I want the audience to to engage with you now and and it's about um it's about having funny bones and yet at the same time funny bones and acting chops you know it's it's the combination steve is interesting because you know i knew he had to start off as the sort of almost like the clown figure yeah at the beginning yeah an interesting and yet art. turn yeah. into mm -hmm. a dictator really yeah and he can do both you know he's been gangsters he's been funny man he's been you know, he's done everything. And, and, and that's why uh, if you inhabit, if you inhabit, and also if you write the character as a three-dimensional character and get them to play it three-dimensional, you, you can't think of anyone else. You know, you can't imagine an alternative. I'll bet none of these real men, though, these real characters tossed around the word fuck as much as they did <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> or maybe I'm wrong about well, that. Well, no, but. I mean, the things were, I mean, Khrushchev and Zukov, they were pretty kind of, you know, their they language were earthy was guys. pretty salty. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, was the script funny to read? And I guess my question yeah. is, the movie is a superb tonal mm. achievement. And I'm curious, I guess, I, how much of that actually manifested itself on the set or was reading yeah. the script as funny as watching the movie no, when i guess we sat down question. and did the table read with all these people you know it, it it was funny it was you know but also it was moving it was dramatic I, I was just aware that at all times there are two things running through the film which is the comedy and the tragedy and 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 they have to help each other and they have to arise out of each other which is why it, i i want to make sure that they arose out of the truth of the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we could see, you know, as we were doing a scene, there's a big scene near the end where Beria scatters lists around and blames each one of them for signing death warrants and so on. And we were aware that this scene goes from high comedy to high tragedy and then back to comedy again. And, 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 and getting it right was that rehearsal period was invaluable because it was about finding that tone so that we could play comedy for real so that the behavior didn't change when we went into a more dramatic moment i think that's the, that's and then a perfect having, explanation why this movie works so well and then having this edit you know the yeah, edit yeah. In f f i did five months very quickly <laughs> are we able to get it down to the right length and then four and a half months of just making sure every frame every moment tells two things at once tells the tells the comedy and tells the tragedy at once you know when it was announced that stalin had died a lot mm. of the people was it true that a lot of the people in the gulag uh, cried? cried the people he they, put there yeah they could not believe that it was stalin that put them there yeah you know this myth grows up this unimpeachable character the fatherland and they so they convinced themselves someone lower down in the order had put them there, or it had been a mistake. That it really but wasn't, it he, he, he wasn't really the one that was at fault. No. And, you know, you get, you know, not trying to draw too much of a parallel, you, you, you speak to people who are very, who maybe are Trump supporters, but are very religious, and you tell them about the kind of the, <laughs> you know, the yeah. moral issues about some of Trump's behavior. They, they don't want to, they don't want to acknowledge it because they, you know, it, it means questioning everything means questioning everything because see one of the things aside from the, the humor of this mm. piece that i think more than any other film i think I've, that i've ever seen ever uh that it it kind of makes you what made me uh, contemplate what leadership actually is and what especially considering what went on during the time period that the mm. death of stalin takes place i mean and in europe mm. in the early yeah. 30s and 40s yeah. What do we really want? What are we? What are we really looking for in our leaders? And and when you look at the at the rise of you mentioned it earlier, these conservative political movements yeah, emerging yeah. or reemerging globally, it's 
chilling. And it's like, I'm thinking, well, you know, we're all going to, we're all headed for wherever we're going to plummet. We might as well laugh our asses off. Otherwise we'd be like, you know, why, I, why go mo, you know, uh, wailing and gnashing our teeth. Well, but part, of the, part of the issue I think is that there's now, you know, several generations have grown up not knowing anything else other than democracy. So if they're jaded by democracy, if they're frustrated, but if they're angry with democracy, they start to think, oh, well, what's the alternative? There must be an alternative. Oh, someone else is coming along suggesting, why don't you do it my way, which, you know, give me all the authority, mm -hmm. you know, because they haven't That's been through point. that period, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, when there were many, many examples of that kind of system of government. And, and, and if, people watch this film and are then prompted to go and then try, you know, look at the history books and examine what else was going on at the time, then then I think that would be useful. You you mentioned people being angry over democracy, but it's there's no anger in this piece. It's the, and it would seem to me that it ought to be there, but it didn't feel angry. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. I was just trying to analyze your well, it's uncategorizable a, movie. Right. Now. Okay. It's a, it's a sort of fact that this, uh, behavior was accepted. I think that's it. And yet underneath people realized that it was unacceptable, but they didn't want to say that's, that's what happens. It's the, it's the kind of, it's where the silence is the loudest noise, really. It's the not objecting, you know, not being, not being the one person to put mm. their hand up and say, I disagree. Yeah. Because you'll be shot. Uh, and so everyone convincing themselves that what was happening was fine. We're talking to writer-director Armando Iannucci and his comedy based on one of the darkest periods and characters in world history, <laughs> the death of Stalin. Uh, uh, Armando, do you consider yourself a moralist? I don't know. I mean, so I don't want to tell people how to behave and how to, you know, it's up to you. It's up to people to work out their own sort of value systems and so on. I, I, and, and that's why I'm trying to make it, you know, looking at something like the death of Stalin, I'm not saying this is the good guy and this is the bad guy. And that's how they'll stay throughout. I actually want it to be, to become quite naturally more complicated than that. And the person like someone like Khrushchev goes yeah. through a change. Also someone like Beria who starts off as the arch villain, you, you sort of see a bit more of him. I'm not saying you'd sympathize with him, but by the end, you're, when something happens to him, you're, you're kind of engaged with it. Um, and I want people, because I think it's what it is, is, it's not really telling people how to behave, but just asking them, how would you behave? Under these circumstances, what would you do? God, would you do any better? Yeah, I was going to say probably similarly. You know, it's, uh, and I, I'm the same. I think I don't know how people got through having to make these big decisions in the 40s and 50s, you know, should I stand up and, and say something about this or should I just be quiet? Right. I, I wanted to ask you, because we only have a couple minutes yeah. here, but but you you have written a book called Hear Me Out, and it's a, co a collection of your writings on classical music. Mm. Mm. That's awesome to me. I mean, you don't <laughs> meet a whole lot of people that are, are really into <laughs> classical music, but you are. I hear, It's more I understand. than you think, but it, it's, I mean, I write partly in the book about how it's almost like, uh, treated as a subject to be embarrassed about. Yeah. Because it's seen as quite elitist and quite old fashioned. And I, quite, I, I know, find myself when, yeah. when people, I, 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 I'll say it, but I kind of keep it yeah. in reserve yeah. because people go, what, you know, yeah. they, they yeah. It's and I talk a, about going out to like lunchtime concerts and recitals, like a kind of Victorian cleric hunting a crack den <laughs> in the middle of the night. You know, that's how yeah, guilty you feel. Yeah. This yeah. strange, dirty habit you have. Of <laughs> yeah. But and it needn't be like that. And no. you go to countries like, you know, I'm Italian. My background's Italian. And people in Naples, you know, opera is like oh, all yes, the people. Right. In Russia. Well, it, was, it was written for the masses, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Russia, ballet, poetry, yeah, right. literature, seen for the people. Yeah. And, 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 and yet in certain, we get, we get this a lot in the UK, you know, politician will not be seen going to the opera but will be going to like a, a soccer game a sports event know. yeah but i remember going to an opera a kind of avant-garde opera in berlin and the mayor of berlin was there because it was the opening night of their new season and he wanted to celebrate that oh. this company was in berlin and this was you know so it's different you know and it, it, it and and going to a concert is not more expensive than going to 
a, a, a major sports fixture. That's, that's really. correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you do you, you mentioned Shostakovich? Did you have any other yeah. pre- preferences? Do you like any particular period? I like uh, 19th century romantics. Uh, well, mostly, yes. No, I'm a huge Mahler. That was my Mahler. initial. Oh, I, God. I, my initial kind of as a that was your introduction. That was my way into music. Ah. Was Mahler? Yeah. And more recently, Bach has become a you know it's uh, it's funny how you find Bach in the end. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was uh, a lot of what he did was the foundation for a absolutely. Lot of what, yeah. He was the first to kind of set the set the bar really and set the rules and set give the example and 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 it hasn't been bettered well uh yeah the the movie is the death of stalin uh, we've been in conversation with armando ianucci he's writer director of the death of stalin it's a very sophisticated funny funny movie with wild and crazily odd comic rhythms and vacillating tonal shifts and if you ever doubted that anyone would or could make a rip-roaring, laugh-out-loud comedy side-splitter about the death of a brutal Russian dictator? Well, doubt no more, because uh, <laughs> Death of Stalin may just well be the laugh-riot comedy of the year. Uh, sir, thank you so much for being with us. It was great having you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you very much.